Hey everybody and welcome back to Art à la carte. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I draw hair. I get this question asked a lot, requests for a tutorial on how I do this. So I'm gonna share a couple of tips and tricks and how I practice hair. And hopefully that will help you guys in your hair drawing journey. But before we get into that, I wanna to touch basis with you guys about mermaid, drawing a mermaid every single day in the month of May. As you guys can tell, I have not been doing that great, I guess you could say. A lot of you guys have shared that you feel frustrated with mermaid, that you haven't been able to keep up with it, and I totally get that. But for me, I don't understand why. Mermaids are some of my favorite things to draw, and I love mermaid. I was wondering why I was so reluctant to commit a drawing a day for mermaid. And then it hit me. You see, every month I'm also doing an exclusive sticker pack for that month. And for May, I really wanted it to be mermaid theme, of course. But I was having a hard time coming up with a design that I liked that worked well for stickers. I ended up just getting frustrated. So I decided to push it aside and not think about it for a few days. And what ended up happening was I just didn't draw anything mermaid because if I was going to draw a mermaid, I felt I should draw the sticker pack, but I didn't want to work on the sticker pack. So you see, it was a thing. I'm happy to announce that I sat down, I made myself work on it, and I do have the sticker pack. It's up and available on my Etsy shop. So for everyone who's been asking if I'm still doing it or if they're available, yes, they are for this month only up on the Etsy shop, but also is my 31 day coloring pack, which is a digital download featuring mermaids. So if you don't wanna draw a mermaid, maybe you wanna color a mermaid. Anyway, thought I would clear that up. So now let's go ahead and get into the actual hair drawing, shall we? Normally when I draw tutorial videos, I like to do it traditionally. That way you can see my hand, you can see the paper, the pencil. But for this one, I decided to do it digitally for the reason I'm showing you how I practice. And I practice a lot and really fast and I figured it would be easier for you to see all the different lines if I did it digitally. I broke my practice down into three steps. The first one is to start off with a head and shoulder base, the one that I don't have to redraw every time I start doing something. And that's one of the reasons that I like having a digital drawing ability because I can put a layer on top and draw just the hair and I can erase that and then not have to redraw the head and shoulders over and over and over again. When you're practicing drawing your hair, think of first just the overall hair shape. Don't try to draw it strand by strand, but think about that morphed shape of the hair. And, and there's different parts to the hair too. There's the back part and the front, you know, the bangs, there's the side tendrils, all those different parts, but think of it as a large overall shape. As I'm practicing them, I'm also not drawing the same shape every single time. I'm changing my hairstyles up. I know a lot of you don't have the ability to draw digitally, and for many years, neither did I. So I would draw traditionally on sketchbook and paper. One tip that you can have if you don't want to draw your head and shoulder over and over again is to draw one and then get it photocopied. So just draw the head and shoulders, no hair, and photocopy that out so that you have a lot of copies to just draw the hair with. The reason that this is important is because when you're focusing a study on something, just worry about that. If you're practicing drawing hands and you draw, uh, want to draw 100 hands, but with those hands, you draw the entire body, you're taking up a bunch more time that you could be using to focus on hands. So having the base already drawn in or just drawing that one part is great if you're on a limited time schedule. Maybe you only have a half an hour a day to practice. If you have a larger amount of time, maybe you have the whole day to, to draw whatever it is you want, then yes, I highly encourage you to draw the head and shoulders as well, because as you're drawing the hair, you're also getting better at drawing head and shoulders, not the shampoo, the base. <laughs> and if you're going to draw the head and shoulders, switch it up a little bit. Don't have the same position all the time. Have it looking this way and then the opposite way in front view and profile and three quarters and because that's just going to help you all the way around. Moving to step two, once we have a hair shape that we like, now I'm going to begin adding in some flowing directional lines. I'm gonna break the hair up into tendrils, not tiny little itty bitty tendrils, but locks, how hair would flow and curl. You'll see them moving in from a thin to thick to thin kind of shape line as they kind of 
get more volume and then taper out. I'm also thinking about how the tendrils will overlap each other. Again, this is just my style of drawing hair. There are so many ways to draw hair out there from realistic to super cartoony. So this method might not produce the style that you want and that's okay, but just in case you want to draw hair in a similar style as to how I'm drawing it, these are the steps I use. Moving on to the last and final step is the detailed line work. Up to this point, everything has been really loose, as sketchy, I'm changing things up a lot, but now I'm getting into making my precise lines. And for this, the biggest key is take your time. Kind of like a hair puzzle, where all the pieces are kind of folding and twisting and turning under each other, and you have to follow this lock through, and that lock goes underneath and then comes back up. Where does this tendril go? So it's kind of a a mind thing. I generally don't talk while I'm doing this part because I'm focusing so much. Another thing to note is that I'm not keeping things smooth. If you look at the top of my character's head, you'll notice that the hairline is not just a smooth line. There's kind of indentations where different locks are. Uh, so one might be sitting a little bit higher on the other. Again, just gives the style that I like. It gives a bit of a dimension, uh, motion, layering to this effect. I'm not going to get into how I color hair. If you'd like to see a video on that, let me know in the description box below. Also, if you'd like a printable like test sheet with just head and shoulders on it where you can draw hair, um, let me know in the comment section and I will see about getting one put up on my website so that you can download that for yourself. I might even already have one. If I do, I'll put a link to that in the description box below. But if you don't see a link, just ask me in the comments. So there we go, my three steps to practicing. And again, with practicing art, art is not something that generally comes overnight or at the end of a tutorial. It takes weeks, months, years of drawing and practicing to get better at it. So give yourself time to improve your skill. Also remembering that your art skill is always changing, always becoming better. It's never coming to a point where you're like, yes, I'm at the place I've always wanted to be. That's never going to happen. There's always going to be something that you can improve on or things that you want to change. So remember to be patient with yourself and don't give up. Well, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And thank you, everyone who has been supporting this channel. I've been talking about the five different ways that you can help out YouTube creators with their channel. And a lot of you guys have been doing that, especially with shout outs and shares on social media. I've been noticing them. Thank you guys so much. All the likes, comments, shares, subscribing to my channel. They are all wonderful ways to help. So I appreciate them all. Once again, thanks for hanging out with me and God bless you guys and we'll see you in another art video. Bye-bye.